This video covers how to complete lab assignment 2.2.1.4, configuring SSH for Net126. So when we open up the lab, we see we've got one PC and one switch. So we've talked about a lot how we would manage a switch or a router or any networked uh, device, such as a switch or router, um, from a PC. So obviously we could console into it, which we've done many times via console cable. Um, when we console into it though, we do usually have to have close access to it at least. Um, but we also talked about remote access using uh, Telnet over the internet connection. So you just have to be connected to the internet somewhere and if you've got Telnet set up on your switch or your router, um, you can log into it. Now, last semester, we set up Telnet by typing in on the switch uh, line VTY 04. Okay. Then we went, uh, the next line we did was password, whatever you wanted that password to be. And then the next word was login to force it to use uh, that login password. Now, the significance of the line VTY 04 is you have zero through four channels, those are the names of them. So if you were to log in, you, the first person would get channel zero, the second person would get channel one, the third person would get channel two, and so on. So if you've got zero through four, that technically means you could have five users log in remotely to your router or switch at the same time. So that's usually more than enough. Um, you'll see sometimes they'll do zero to 15. That means 16 people could log in at one time. But the downside of using Telnet is the protocol that sends that information back and forth from the PC or whatever device you're working on to the switch or the router that you're logging into remotely, everything is sent in plain text. So if you were to capture that traffic using, let's say, Wireshark or any simple program like that is, that is actually free, you'd be able to see the exact exchange of information. So you'd be able to see username, whatever you type in, password, whatever you type in. So we want to try to overcome that, especially in today's, uh, you know, network security aware awareness. We want to try to prevent using plain text um, protocols such as Telnet. So we're just going to show you how to do Telnet first. That's kind of the first steps here. It says using the command prompt on PC1. So we go to PC1, desktop, command prompt. And this will just be like doing it from your home computer. And we're going to uh, telnet to S1. So we type in telnet as the command. And then we want to use the IP address that is set for S1, which is 10.10.10.2. So we see that up here in our addressing table. So we hit enter there. And you see it says trying to contact it, user access verification. So this is just like if we were to um, use a line console to get into it same exact thing they're looking for that password there and it's cisco you won't see anything type on the screen that's for security reasons but you just hit enter after you type in cisco and you're logged into the switch so you can do enable and then show run all right and you can get all that same information just like if you were doing um a console line and consoling into the switch right you can see all that you can even make configuration changes okay so it says show the current configuration and note the passwords that are in plain text here you could see it um, if you were using something like Wireshark you wouldn't even need access to this you could just see the traffic that I sent back and forth and note that everything is in plain text so it says enter the command that encrypts plain text passwords here so if we do config T on our router, I'm sorry, the switch. Um, now we're going to enter the command that encrypts it, which is service password dash encryption. Hit enter. Now if we go back and do a show run, you notice here that the passwords are encrypted using a hash, so it doesn't actually show Cisco. The only bad part about this still is you notice that these are exactly the same because the password Cisco is the same. So if you ever figure out that hash that was ran through with the algorithm, you can kind of technically reverse engineer it, but it would take a little bit of time. So that's just showing you that one way again. That doesn't matter though. The Telnet protocol, it would still send the passwords over the internet 
in plain text. So that's not a good practice. So we're going to show a more secure way, which is SSH. Okay, SSH uses a series of challenges so that it can be encrypted. So it says uh, encrypt communications. Now on Moodle as well, I've got the um, SSH for remote management PDF that you can open up and it'll show you the commands to type in, but you'll see them here as well. So it says, it's generally not safe to use Telnet because data is transferred in plain text. Therefore, use SSH whenever it is available. So we're going to go to S1. All right, the CLI tab is locked, so let's do a... Okay, well, let's just Telnet into it. All right, so we're still Telnet it in, and it wants us to set up all of the uh, information here for SSH. So it says configure the domain name to be netacad.pka. So we do IP domain dash name and then whatever you want it to be so we're doing netacad dash or sorry dot pka hit enter and then it says secure keys are needed to encrypt the data generate the rsc key rsa keys using a thousand twenty four key length okay so we're going to do crypto key generate rsa hit enter it asks you how many bits in the module it suggests 512. We're going to change that to 1024, okay, by just typing it in and hitting enter. And you see it'll say generating 1024 bit RSA keys. Keys will be non exportable. And it gives you the OK that has done it. Now we're going to create an SSH user and reconfigure the VTY lines for SSH access only, all right, instead of Telnet. So uh, we got to create an administrator user with the Cisco as a secret password. So we do username, administrator, secret, Cisco. Okay, and it tells you that, that SSH version 1.99 has been enabled. All right, now we got to go configure it. So line, and if you noticed here, they've got 04 and 515. Okay, so we'll just do line v, VTY 015. That'll take care of 0 through 4 and 5 through 15. Okay, and we want to do transport input SSH. That will force it to use SSH. We'll do login local because we set up that local username of administrator and Cisco as the secret password there. Exit. Okay. So we've got that set up. Uh, it also says remove the existing VTY line password. This should override that. Um, let's just double check. Put the show run. Yep. So we no longer have, well, uh, it still says the password. So let's go in line VTY 015. Uh, no password Cisco. So that no password Cisco should take it out of there. Now when we do a show run, it shows you no password there. So we did the Lime VTY 015, no password Cisco to take that out of there. Okay. Now it says exit the Telnet session and attempt to log back in using Telnet. The attempt should fail. Now, of course, we're already logged in here, so we have to log out of this session altogether. So if we do, uh, oh, and one other thing you could set too is the version. You could do IP SSH version two to make it use uh, SSH version two. It's the most updated, up-to-date version. So let's say we type exit, exit. All right, that ended our connection completely. Now, when we try to do telnet 10.10.10.2, hit enter, right nothing happens right it says open close so no matter how many times I do that it fails it'll fail okay so it says attempt to log in using SSH type SSH and press enter without any parameters to reveal the command usage instructions basically that just they just want you to see what uh, how to use it right so if you do SSH dash L and then you specify the username which is administrator Okay, and then um, and it tells you that's an L, not a number one. So it's SSH dash L, not one, but L, administrator, and then the target is 10.10.10.2. .10 .10 okay, 
Okay, and then it's going to ask you for the password, which is Cisco, and boom, we're back in, right? And then the next password is Cisco too. So as we go through, we can do show run, we can do configuration mode, all the different stuff we were just doing. So, and we also have 100 out of 100 down there at the bottom right hand corner. So using SSH is much more secure than Telnet, and this just kind of shows you the um, different ways to remotely log in once you configure it. That concludes lab assignment 2.2.1.4 uh, for Net126, which covers the routing and switching essentials curriculum in the Cisco Academy.